This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Okay guys, today is Sunday. We have a grocery store call. Or one of the circuits on the rack is running warm, of course. It just came out of alarm, but unfortunately, it's been going up and down for maybe a day or two. I asked him to pull a particular section so I could check the evaporators. I bet you this is it right here, which I can kind of feel. Makes you wonder if some of these little crates are probably packed full of crud. I watch you watching me. Just confirmed, and they did say yes, this is it. Let's take a look. Okay, looks like we're feeding. That's a good thing. It's a little different than what I'm used to. Most of them are all one big long thing. Big long evaporator. But this is a lot newer than some of them. Unfortunately, the evaporators are up here in the wall, and you can see, it looks like they're clear. So I wonder if we got a refrigeration issue, like a refrigerant issue. These are all on uh, electronic EPR valves, so it usually keeps really should keep really tight temperatures. Definitely feels a little better over here. This is really cold, but. We've got multiple thermometers or temperature sensors in here, so they should like some should be warmer than others. Like here's a little dead spot. It's not completely dead, but a little bit. And this area here is also running a little warm, but the coils look like they're clean. So I think we need to go look at the rack and see if there's something weird going on there, because it's really seeming like refrigerant of some sort. Thank you. Oh, this is getting better. Everybody's storing everything up here. Nice. It's really getting good. So this is one of our newest stores. B, most of our stores are nowhere near as nice as this. So there that is. We're running 52% capacity. We're running 404. We're set for 48 suction. We're running 47. Heads average 10, 210. We're at 212. That looks good. Outdoor fans are all off. So fresh meat, uh, rack C, circuit one, um, circuit two. We have two temp sensors in there. They're both at 4649. EPR is at 100%, so it thinks. And we are at 48 degrees. Now we may have possibly some strainers, but you can see as we go along here, it should really be more steady if it's truly on the EPR style system and it's all over the place. You can see we've jumped higher here. Now, if you want to see a little more accurate, we can hit enter. And instead of using graph, we use log. Log is a lot more detailed and it does in about every three minute increments. So the big thing here is page down and that's the fastest way to scroll because nobody showed me this. It wasn't until I finally, you know, got one of the other guys to tell me about it and it's kind of helpful. Versus sitting here going down, 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 down. You know, if you've never worked on one of these, you just, you're not used to it. Let's go to say dairy case. Let's see what its normal temperature looks like. Graph it. See, it's holding steady, and these are defrost. So you zoom in, these are your defrosts. Otherwise, it holds pretty steady. The other one's obviously not doing that. You go to setup, you can see when its defrost time is. It's gonna do four of them at 1.30 and 7.30 a.m. and p.m. So our biggest problem happened on the 12th at about midnight. You can see, yeah, I think they're screwy, but you can really see things going to heck here midnight so that is on the number nine case jumping back up to number two let's see where it took a dump here's things are getting screwy uh 12th at midnight same thing we're getting really more jaggedy um something happened at that time 
Let's see what we got for a sight glass. Yep, that's rack B, that's nice and clear. I don't think they put one on C. If it is, I don't know where it's at. See, here's your heat recovery. This is where you take the hot gas and run it into a water heater instead of outside. Same thing, that valve there, it just basically switches direction. That valve there does the same thing. You got a decent teacher, it's not that bad, but boy, when people don't want to share information, things really are pain hind in. And of course it's locked. Yeah, I'm sure I set an alarm off. Probably running split condenser. I want to say C would probably be the middle. If that's the case, our receiver looks like it's below 10% down there, like zero, which is awesome. Like I said, they run the receivers really low. That way you have just enough to make it run. Anything extra, you end up just losing it if you have a leak. Yeah, look at that one there. It's nice and nice and high at about 30%. There's a layout chart somewhere. Usually you gotta go find it. Probably low on charge, which means we have a leak somewhere, which is great. Last time I had a leak here, it was catastrophic and the whole store went down. It was because it blew a hole out of the side of the compressor. High voltage line ended up uh, shortened to a refrigerant line in one of these compressor sections, which they vibrate like crazy. So let's go ahead and yank some of these out. So you've got your compressors here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two of them are locked out for some reason. Oil levels look like they're up. You can see where some of these have shorted and rubbed into things. Uh, right there is one of the perfect examples of it vibrating and rubbing into things. That's happened multiple times. That must have gotten fixed there because then you're possibly going to rub through there. Same thing here. That's, I, I ain't even moving it until I kill power to this thing because I moved it one time and it shorted. Getting into the power section here, there's compressor number three that's tripped. See, that's not one of the ones that were bypassed. So you come up here, three should be on. It's not, obviously, because it's tripped. That means a high voltage, something or another happened. Look at that, see how it's black? I mean, you can see where it's happened before. These have shorted into things and blown chunks out. Well, that probably, yeah, you can see that's happened there. So it looks like it blew the chunk out of it. Let's make sure that power's dead on that one. We'll test our stick. It's working working let's go to three seems to be dead working yep look at that what did i tell you obviously that needs fixed on all of them but unfortunately it doesn't look like it's happened so now that that's dead let's go ahead and get that repaired that might be some of our issue we might be losing capacity uh if you think it's running but it's not even though our suction's right let's go to number three let's go ahead and just completely kill it that way if engaged all legs are dead there's compressor three completely off kind of curious so that takes three compressors out of circuitry because for whatever reason they got uh seven and eight uh, locked out for some reason i ain't sure why yeah i don't like that i don't want to just tape that up so cut that bad section out there you go I've got my usual crimpers I use out there at the truck but these things ain't pulling that much power coming undone check the other ones for problems we don't see anything so let's make this so it can't short into anything else i think uh i think that there might work let's twist that like that make sure these aren't touching anything i haven't really investigated it so we're pretty safe here the way that is. None of these wires are getting into anything. Seems like they're pretty free and clear. Those look pretty good. What's funny is they don't have a proving switch on this to make sure that it's okay. You can go ahead and turn that three back on. Stand over here as much as we can. Look away. Boom, heard a click. 15 amps, 14.3, 14.5. That one's running. 
That one's running. Yeah, what I had was one of these lines here shorted into like right there, what have you. Yeah, it really wasn't in a good spot. I think it was this one or that one downstairs. Yeah, it's getting ready to rub through. If we do it like that, you might believe and get in there to crimp it or uh, get on there to clamp it. Better being in the sharp edges, I'll tell you that much. Jumping back over here to our temperatures. Look at that crap, fresh meat, 32 degrees. What I ended up doing is going through every one of these <clears throat> and getting them set up. I had this wire here that was actually getting really close to hitting that valve. That's what happened on the other one. It shorted into that uh, and then blew a hole through the refrigerant line and lost uh, 400 pounds. Uh, this one here, here and here, all these are taken care of now. It's funny that they don't have an amp uh, clamp uh, proving switch of some sort in here. Fresh meat, of course, is back up to 49 for some reason. What's going on there with that? Go over to defrost times, uh, one, seven, and nine. Perhaps at 61, still it still hasn't came down. I think we may end up having to add some refrigerant to this thing. Did it come down? It started to come down and it dropped off too. We may still be low. Like I said, we, we looked a little low. I think it sucks here is, is uh, getting a refrigerant line up here because it's all the way downstairs. Here is the store layout with all the different racks and stuff. B, C, and A. C is in the middle. This one here that we're at right now is C. That's B, A's downstairs, so that's probably Y. So C is in the middle. That is the one we were looking at. This one here is C, I just marked it. This is your discharge gas. It's not hot. I mean, it's it's got some warmth, but this right here is cold because it's valved off this is where they're splitting the coil at so in colder weather just you know keep head pressure up they'll just shut off one section of the coil got a check valve here on that and they'll just use one section of the coil here's your hold back valves your open one uh, differential to keep your pressures up but we're low on charge let's go grab the detector and see if we can find something and there's the other one hidden behind all that and our refrigerant is right there hidden behind all that so we're there, we got this one over here, so. All right, so we went ahead and warmed up outside. Let's see, let's go into sniffer mode because if it's a big one, it's gonna go nuts when we walk in here and hopefully it don't. Might be able to just add some for today and come back and look for a leak. We'll see whether or not this hose will work all the way up there. I don't think it's going to reach. I really don't because it's quite a distance. Okay, we was able to go up just four steps and it'll reach. All right, well, following the, hot, uh, the discharge line, which is hot gas, over to here is in uh, speed mode. All of a sudden I narrowed it down, put it in parts per million. We got a leak. It's definitely on that fitting down low. You can see it's dropping. Come back down. Boom. Hopefully it's one of these flare fittings. That'd be awesome. But it just does not like. Sky high on that solder joint. That don't usually happen. Wow. I'm gonna spray it and see how bad it is. Maybe I can bypass that section of the valve because if you look at it, it looks like it's going out to the condensers or to the reclaim unit. Maybe I can bypass that and get around it. Found it real fast in uh, super mode. So I wanted to make a quick shot out here to this. Make sure we ain't got no major ones out here because it never fails. You find one leak, there's another one. And then, uh, you miss it because you thought you had it. So like my one guy says, we're looking for a 100 pound leak. We ain't looking for no 12 ounces a year leak. I don't like how tight that is. Something just fell. I hope that wasn't my leak detector that just fell. No, it's just my drill, no big deal. 
Plate detectors up there safe and sound. Go ahead and bleed her out up here. A long, long hose. There we go. All purged. All right, it's going to go through the Schrader course, so it's going to take a little while. You would think it would have oil everywhere. Seals, because I see a little bit of oil there. It's not really that hot, so now's the time to do it. Let's go grab the soapy, see if we can get that thing to squirt. Oh, there it is. Will I get lucky and be able to tighten that up? Let's find out. It won't tighten up. And I'm not going to smack and snap that uh, freaking thing out of there. So, uh, like I said, it's leaking between the plates there, not on the weld joint, which is good. So, uh, we're going to have to come back. I uh, don't have that uh, seal. I don't think there's any, sh oh, well, lucky there. We got a shut off there. One there. And there. So yeah, we can, sh we can isolate this turd. I'm always worried about not getting the accurate reading. So we got one right there that fits. It fits right there. And it fits right there. It looks to me that that is one, two, two and an eighth. Makes it a little easier to pin for the newer guys because I'm a new guy when it comes to some of this bigger stuff. Look at that too, that would have been probably just as intelligent. All right, we just about got all the refrigerant in there. Oh, hey, here's a diagram. You come out of the rack, which is right there, comes across through this line right here, comes up, you got these valves here. I could probably, I need to probably shut that one, come through, and then that's the first one. Comes out of its bottom over to that one. So on this one here, the three valve, three way valve comes into its center and goes through. Center goes through and out of the bottom comes over to this one. So it comes out of the bottom and comes over to this three way. And this one here is for the heat recovery water coil. This one feeds the heat recovery air coil. I don't even see that as an option off of this particular controller with the other ones. So if I isolate this, it should keep it from going to that, but either way, it looks like it's gonna go through it. Yeah, cause I mean, it kind of goes through that one to the heat air recovery through this one and then through this one and that one and eventually gets over to the condenser. Got looking again. All right, so it comes out, comes across. You can valve it there, valve it there. That would isolate both of them. And then it comes across and goes out the wall over here, which then goes out to my condensers. So good. We can actually isolate this turd at those two uh, valves there. Here is the bypass. We're gonna turn that on first. Oh, there we go. Got that open. So now we should be able to close this one. Oh, there we go. And close this one. Look at that, they're different. That one's got no seal. Of course, they're not gonna have any heat reclaim. So that means they're gonna have to run gas. I hope they have gas heat. That one's got the valve in there. Let's see what our suction's doing on this thing. Head's not jacking up. Suction's a little higher. See if that slows down the leak. It's gonna have pressure on it no matter what. Yeah, it's still doing it, but there's still gonna be pressure in that until you can suck it all out. It's not even hot. I don't think a stupid thing even works. At this point, I'm, I've got it recharged to the point where we should be pretty close. Let's go out here and look at our liquid level and see if it's up. We're getting one fan running. We're warm here, cold, and we're getting pretty warm there. About 15 percent, a lot better than it was. All right, so we should be good for today. We're gonna have to get that valve or get a seal for it. I ain't sure which one it would be. 
haven't had to do one before. So the hot gas comes down, goes to this air handler, goes back on the same big line, and then goes back upstairs where it was at. It's kind of a piping uh, maze. And to make things better, the uh, one of their other stores that are about 75 miles away just called in too. So probably something very similar would not surprise me. When we did what we did here, we just isolated the air handler, which is this one here. The way it basically does, it goes through the valve and out of the bottom. If it's in bypass or if it, uh, it's going through the reheat, it's gonna go straight on through to the reheat. If not, if it's in the other position, it's gonna come out of the bottom and then it's going to feed into that valve there. Uh, it'll also send that way, but it's gonna hit the check valve, which will stop it there. So it's gotta go through this valve. If it's bypassed, then it's gonna go straight on through. If it's not, actually it's gonna go straight on through, <clears throat> go to the water heater, back out of the water heater, come around through a check valve, back down, then out to the condenser and eventually work its way back to the liquid line and then eventually through all the cases and back to the suction. So we are isolated, so as long as they have another hot water heater, we're good. Which I would about guarantee they probably do, I hope. So here's the other rack coming across, doing exactly the same thing. It goes through there, goes to heat recovery on that same air handler, comes back through a check valve, same deal. Should have a bypass uh, yeah, right here. You can isolate it there and you can isolate it right there. So guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, it's It's got enough in there now and it's running, so as long as they don't have a problem with the uh, hot water. We should be good and then we're not losing any refrigerant, which is good until we can get back and get that changed. They got valves here, which seems I took this off. It started leaking, which is really awesome. So had to yank out the valve core and put a new one in it. So definitely a good thing we have the straighter core removals. And uh, that's about it. So I'm gonna pack things up and get the heck out of here and see what else we run into. If you guys enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, check, click the notification bell. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one. Later.